Welcome to a day in the life of a beekeeping entrepreneur, April. Hello, I'm Griffey, so welcome to Winnie Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living. Now we do reviews as well. Now I'm in the office, first thing it is. Catching me out Thursday the 13th, the bank holiday has been and we are still catching up with orders from the bank holiday. We had a bit of a sale and funny enough, we appeared on BBC uh, Wales News talking about how good honey is and we did have a little boost uh, in sales off the back of that, uh, which we're very glad to see. I'm in the office with Flea. And the plan today is I've just got to pack some stuff. Essit has got a day off today, so I've just got to pack some urgent things. Uh, first thing this morning, we're going to load the truck up and we're going to spend the day driving around sites, putting honey supers on. That is the plan. Um, that's it. A few items to pack and we'll be on the road. Here we are in the shop and as you can see, There is not much room in here at the minute. But we are gonna sort this storage solution out. This, uh, hopefully within the next few months, we are gonna build uh, a bit of an extension onto this building and have a bit better storage and set this area up more as um, a retail outlet where you can walk around and actually see stuff. Because at the minute, half the stuff you can't see and it's no good. So we got honey going out there and I've still got compost and syrup to pack and then we are on the way out and as a thank you to Ollie yeah. gave me this hat you give a Welshman anything for free they will always use it or wear it that's what I got to pack now we're going to put some supers on the hive back to get the eye take that extra stand super up the bees there not many hives there come back probably have food but load up for the next site and then we're gonna definitely get two sites in today maybe three we'll see and i've got to transfer a nuke into a travel box um there's a collection tonight and a collection tomorrow morning so it's basically collections every single day uh probably for like the next six weeks odd i know we're do doing it backwards but we could block the collections up onto like a Saturday or something, but I just find uh, really good customer service, work with the customers. If, if they can come on a Wednesday morning or come on a Thursday evening, as long as we're able to get the bees ready, we, we live here, so we tend to do it like that just to make things easier for the guys buying the nukes from us. All right, let's go. Now, I haven't done a standalone video yet of how many supers fit in the back of this truck with that truck man canopy on, but I have already had 30 plus in there. Easy. And the last pickup, I could only put, I think, around 20 supers in, so it's a big improvement. So I have been starting to empty this shed. Some of the sites have already been round. There's more supers wrapped up in the top shed as well. But I'll get these out first. That's the main thing, and some extra honey in there because the container is full. Record crop last year. So, uh, down on this side, I know I've got these abello. Uh, that's got to be for the abello stand. And then the rest I can just pick from. Now, what I love about this pickup is I can get three rows in. My last pickup, I could only get two rows in, so that is huge, 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 huge for me. So a rough idea, if I bring that super out, I may get two layer three deep on the bottom, then I might get three, 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 and then all the way up. We will do a standalone video because I'm going to get the air. I need to put a hive stand on, so that's enough supers to get the air. Hive stand on top now. 
come back, food, and then we can really load up. Uh, we probably go to Brechva, and we may go to Towy Petals on the way back, see what time is like and what the weather's doing. It's still really cold. I need to transfer some nukes into travel boxes ready for collections. But we'll get as much done as we can. Now, when I said I've got other pallets, uh, supers wrapped up on pallets, that's basically what I've done. That's the only one that had to be out. Put a bit of other chipboard or plywood on the floor to seal the pallet up, strap them up, and then really pallet them up so no bees can rob them. Starting to get a bit more space in there now with stock selling, but there's more of those back in the back of the shed there under shelter. Now that's not the best way to store them because once the season does start and you get a tiny hole in the plastic, bees will rob it like crazy and that's what we don't want to do at all. So I prefer to put everything in the warm room if I can, without, obviously without the heater on and that works quite well, but just space it in general, you know. The honey farm and the business is growing and we've got more supers, more bees, need more sheds. So what I may do this year, I may buy another shipping container like this, a decent one like this, insulate it up and that'll be super storage. So I think one of these plus the warm room, that'll probably see me for a while. First sight of the day, cup of tea. Living the dream. Look at this, boys back. Blue skies, the dandelion is out. Still way more to come. It's only nine degrees with a bit of wind, so the bee is not flying amazingly. So we're not gonna do inspections, we're basically just putting supers on, because it's gonna take me a few more days to get around all my bees. And then hopefully next week we can start doing proper inspections. But first, I'm gonna put that other stand there. Decent. They're not on this end frame. That is decent, ready for a super. Now, when I give these bees a wet super, now it's literally going to be like rocket fuel from. They're going to get a bit of feed, and when this sun and heat really starts coming out, they're going to go for it. Now, I get a lot of comments off people. They see me using swapping poly and timber back and forth, and they go, Oh, I can't believe you're pulling timber on poly. Or, oh, I can't believe you're pulling poly on timber. Hey, it don't matter. Do you think the bees care if their box is made of poly and timber or just one type of material? Or do you think the bees are going to fill those supers up regardless? I ain't got the time or the space to keep all that kit separate apart from this Sabello hive. Now that hive was given to me 
uh, I've got a video on it, a review video. And uh, it's a good hive, but it's got the interlocking system. Now you can put extra or timber boxes, etc., on that, but ideally not because of the interlocking system. The panes, the swinties, the, the, those are the main polys I've got. You can mix and match them, it makes no difference at all. Now these bees, they don't actually need two supers. They're roughly half a box. Full of bees, five, six frames they are. So if I give them two supers now, that's too much. But because I've got these Abello supers for the polyhive, I don't want to mess around and not have this with me. So, I'm going to do what's called the Chris Manton trick. Chris Manton taught me this. So you put your crown board back on top to keep the heat in. We may have to scrape this off. And then we're going to put that super on top of this. Now, the reason Chris Manton does that is he's got way more bees than me. And he's got to go around his bees really early and to get around it, he'll over super the bees. So he'll tend to do it sometimes when you've got a single brood box, you put the clown board down and then you put the first soup on top of the clown board. So if the weather does turn, then the bees have got something they can come up into, but you haven't reduced the heat in the bottom box. It's a really good trick. Um, I don't tend to use it just because I, I haven't got the same amount of bees as, as Chris. But nonetheless, it's a very, very good trick. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm storing this hooper above this hive. So if they do come into this hooper and they start filling it, they can still go up into this box, but I'm not chilling the whole box down by giving them two supers. So always worth that trick. And if you're wondering who Chris Manton is, he's on Twitter. So give him a follow great page to follow again very decent hive coming out of winter very much needing a super all right looking a bit better there so i head back home it'll be food time and then we'll sort this back out get more supers in and we'll go back out again Right, we are back, just had grub, full, enough supers for the next site, and I'm going to put the two travelling nuke box in the back seat with me, just in case I don't come back here, I'll go straight to the nuke yard, then bring the bees back with me. Just arrived in Brechva. Now I've parked a fair bit away from the apiary. The fields are absolutely soaking. Now it's only a little distance and I may be able to drive through it, but I don't want to risk getting stuck. So I am going to handball it over from here. Let's hope the weather gets much much better because there's one site i can't get to at all that's the on the home apiary if it doesn't dry up within the next week i'm gonna have to go down there with a the tractor because the pickup just can't get there the fields are that waterlogged Losing a bit of time carrying stuff back and forth here now. 
There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hives on this site. So be a minimum super each, some may need two, but then again, there could be dead out. So we haven't gone through this site yet. Still only about 10 degrees. Bees are flying pretty good. I'm not gonna inspect anything today, just getting these boxes on. Oh, first problem of the day, probably some kind of drone layer, drone laying queen. The bees are literally just in a pocket there. So let's take a look to see what the problem here is. Got a bit of abandoned brood. Gonna check this out. There's dead bees in all of them. So when you see capped brood like that, always check. If you can see a bee fully fully grown underneath, good, probably Varora type problems. But if there's like a dark, gooey, stinky mess there and you put a, put a matchstick in there and it ropes and you've got foul brood so just always double check that that's not what that is um we'll go deep into the box to find out what the problem is there is some kind of brood in here nothing wrong with the brood just not much of it at all Not much eggs. Eggs again on that one. Yeah, I mean, what's the consensus? Nothing wrong with the brood health enough. It's probably had uh, some kind of varroa damage, but basically the bees are shrinking down and the brood on the outside is dying off because of the lack of heat. These could potentially make it, but the odds are against them. They're probably going to die. Um, I'm just going to leave this be for today. Um, it's a shakeout, basically. So I'll deal with this next time. Now I'll do this next week. See what they look like and just shake them out then, I think. So off to a bit of a bad start, really. That one is the one we just saw. This one was a little bit better, maybe three frames of brood, not amazing. And one dead out. And then we got a full box of bees, so. More like that for the rest of them, please. There's a nice colony. Commercial box. Full with bees. Now, so far I'm not very happy with what I'm seeing on this site, it's very mm -hmm. average. It's nice to see, hopefully when I hit some of these bigger boxes as I head down the line. Good strong colony. But this box... That is gone, so I need to add that to my list. Bring a new box for this. Now, I'm not sure if I've said this in the video yet, I am actually in Brechfa. So most of these bees, if not all of them, are Welsh black bees. So, you know, native, eight bees, mellifera, mellifera type. Not pure, but as good as you're gonna get. And that could explain why some of these are a little bit behind but then some of them then are a bit forward so I suppose that's just how it is this year talking to a few bee farmers they're all saying the same some hives are amazing some hives are okay some hives are terrible and I suppose I'm seeing exactly the same thing myself there's another decent colony on the commercial box Seems the big commercial hives, yeah, they've wintered really good. Now oh, we're just gonna smoke the bees down and we're gonna scrape this wax off.
Keep that. Go to keep the top of the frames clean. You can see a bit of honey coming in there. So we don't want to crush any bees. I need two hands for this one. Leave the bees, dry that off. Right, I've got a warning on the camera, say my battery is low. So I'll stop filming this site here and I'll pick you up back at the car. Alright, try and get a bit more in with the battery. We have finished the site now. Things are looking much, much better down this end. More hives. Like that covering all of the box. Now looking at the site, I've had the problems more down that end. I wonder if that is the reason. So one dead duck, which was up there, and the other three hives that haven't had supers out. Uh, try again, the GoPro battery is flat. So what I was saying was, down this end, the bees have done really well. Two supers on a lot of them straight away. On a super, super on everything all the way up to here. Brood, everything looking right, the very small three frames of brood. This one has got a super on, not amazing, but good enough for a super. And then up on this corner then. That's the one we went through. Probably gonna be a shakeout. Not much lay in. Little bit more laying, nothing amazing. Then this isn't going to die out or anything, but not doing very well. Dead out, then that hive doing very well. So, funny how all the losses or problem hives on that end of the apiary. And I wonder, is the weather coming through that way? Is that what's affected those hives, damp, cold? I don't know. Just uh, worth putting that in the video, just in case you guys might have seen something similar on your sites. Okay, back in the car. No, on the breakfast site, my parents lot actually live here and it is, let me check. Almost five o'clock. So I'm gonna call up there now for a quick cup of tea, head home, change the battery in the GoPro, and by then it'll be a good time to get those nukes into those travel boxes and uh, That'll probably be it for today. Bit slow on this side carrying stuff in, surprising how much time you lose and a few problem highs. And I ended up going into the boxes to see if there was no you know, major problems, everything. Always check the problem pages this time of year. So you'll see me going around putting boxes and everything. But if I see hives not looking healthy, I do take a, a nose uh, straight away on those hives to make sure that there's nothing uh, more sinister behind why they're failing, that it's just a, a natural failure. Um, not worried uh, about what's, what I've seen here. Um, 70, 80% positive on this site, and um, I suppose that's a good average, you know. Now we're seeing the problems with the queens and etc. You don't see that when you're doing your hefting and you know basic winter checks. This this time of year, you see uh, what the actual losses is. But still, overall, my losses are still very very low. So you know nothing to complain about. Right, cup of tea and back to work. Ah, as mum loves gardening and fair dudes. She's really good at growing flowers. So, last job of the day, we're in the nuke yard. We've got two nukes to put into the transport box because we've got collections tonight. This basically is almost a daily job now, but I don't mind it. The nuke yard's not far from home and 
it's just a, an easy way of doing it. So get these nukes in. Oh, that's a lovely nuke. Whoever's getting that nuke is going to be happy with that. So whenever I'm getting nukes ready to go, I make sure I see the queen. There she is, on the brood. Lovely. Now, just to note, I've already gone through this, these nukes this year already. Checked them all over so I know everything is spot on with them. With these nukes, you screw them tight. Same the other side. And that's it. And that is it for today. Two nukes and look at this. Wasps getting in at the feeder. That's what that is. So we'll have to put some filler or something, smooth that back over before that goes back out. So nice to have some weather. I mean, today hasn't been amazing. Between nine degrees and 14 degrees throughout the day. But at least we're getting out there, getting work done. Nukes are being collected, supers being put on and the beekeeping season feels finally like it started. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload videos every week. Thanks for watching.